When I first decided to go plant-based, I was really fired up. I had just learned about all the amazing benefits of plants from more energy, lower risk of disease, and a potentially longer lifespan. So I cleared the kitchen of all meat and dairy and promptly made a bunch of meals that tasted like cardboard. <laughs> I had a lot to learn about how to make my new lifestyle both sustainable and delicious. 10 years and over 10,000 plant-based meals later, I want to share what I've learned with you. But first, I've got to tell you that I am not a plant-based evangelist. I'm not here to convince anyone to do anything. But if you've already decided that you want more plants in your life and you're trying to figure out how to do that and get really good at running at the same time, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to The Planted Runner. I'm Coach Claire Bartholik, and my mission is to help you improve your running, your mindset, and your life with science-backed training and plant-based nutrition. Today, I'm going to go over the common reasons runners struggle when starting a plant-based diet, how to build a plant-based plate for every meal, and what key nutrients you need to pay attention to for health and performance. In this episode, I'll go over what you need to eat better today, but if you're wanting even more details, I've got you. My book, The Planted Runner, Running Your Best with Plant-Based Nutrition is available now wherever books are sold. I include everything you need to become a better runner all in one place, fueled by plants. You can order your copy today or you can enter to win a signed copy from me for free. To enter, just write a five-star review of the podcast on Apple Podcasts. I read every single one, and I'll randomly choose a winner at the end of each month for this entire year. I'm going to announce this month's winner at the end of the episode right after this week's Mental Strength Minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. Once you've decided to make the transition to a plant-based lifestyle, it can be really exciting at first. You head to the grocery store, pumped about this new journey into optimum health, and then you realize you have no idea what you're doing. I found that there are three reasons many people struggle initially and might even end up quitting. The first is when you simply cut out meat and dairy without really thinking about what to replace them with. Bread and pasta are easy fallbacks and can quickly lead to an unbalanced diet, not to mention they get pretty old pretty quickly. The next reason people give up is because they take it too far. If your reason for going plant-based is for health, you might decide to eat nothing but salad for a couple of days. This is pretty much the way I did it and I do not recommend it. If all you're eating is vegetables, you will naturally become super hungry and cranky and quickly lose motivation. So don't do that. And the third reason comes down to perspective. It becomes very easy to focus on all the things you can't eat, get frustrated, and then end up right back where you started, declaring that plant-based just isn't working for you. There is a better way. The key to a successful, healthy, and delicious plant-based diet is knowing how to make your meals satisfying, well-balanced, and delicious. And it might just be easier than you think. This episode was inspired by the athletes I coach on the PR team. We're often talking in detail about what to eat and when, so I thought it was time that I deep dive into this area here on The Planted Runner. Now, before we go any further, quick disclaimer. I have been certified as a sports nutrition specialist, but I am not a registered dietitian. The difference means that I'm qualified to coach and support athletes when it comes to what they eat for performance, but I don't give individualized advice on exact calorie counts or macros, and I don't create meal plans. What I do is share what I've studied, what works for me as a plant-based athlete, and what works best for the hundreds of athletes that I've coached. If you need a customized nutrition plan, please seek out a registered dietitian who works with runners, preferably plant-based, of course. I like to build my plant-based meals while thinking about a dinner plate. Half the plate gets filled with vegetables or fruits, and 25% is a plant-based protein like beans, and 25% is whole grains or starchy vegetables like sweet potatoes. 
Then I add a drizzle of plant-based fat like tahini or a sprinkle of nuts, and that's it. Armed with this formula, you can create limitless options for the perfect plant-based meal. Now, to be clear, this 50-25-25 ratio is not always ideal. You will need to adjust your plate based on your activity and calorie needs. If you're a marathoner who just ran 20 miles, you're gonna have an exceptionally hard time getting in all the calories that you need with a diet that's 50% vegetables. If that's you, try filling half your plates with grains or starch, a quarter with veggies, and a quarter with protein. If your goal is mainly to build muscle, you might want to shift to 30% protein, 20% grains or starch, and 50% veggies or fruit. In other words, your goals and your activity help determine the structure of what's on your plate, but the components are the same. I'll take a closer look at what's on your plate and why, but first I wanted to say thank you to everyone who has signed up to run with me in my beautiful hometown this fall. There's only a few spots left, so if you're on the fence, now is the time to snag your spot at theplantedrunner.com slash retreat. Here are the quick details. September 14th through 17th, 2020, I will be hosting a four-day running retreat in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Asheville, North Carolina. We'll be staying in luxury cabins right on the French Broad River where we can run right out the door. You'll get run coaching, strength training classes, guest lectures, and more. And of course, it will feature amazing plant-based food and a little nightlife as well. I've led many of these retreats over the years, and I am so excited to be hosting this one in my backyard. Early bird pricing is only until March 1st, so sign up today at theplantedrunner.com slash retreat. Let's look at our plate in a little more detail. I like to start with the fruits and veggies. Fruits and vegetables are full of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that can help reduce the risk of developing chronic disease. They are also rich in fiber, which makes you feel fuller longer with fewer calories per bite. Fiber is essential for gut health and digestion, and in my opinion, highly underrated. While some fruits and vegetables may rank higher if you're to put them on some kind of health list, the truth is that all fruits and vegetables are good for you. You can choose fresh, frozen, or even the convenience of canned. Variety is important, so aim to include a rainbow of different colors as often as you can, such as green vegetables like leafy greens, bok choy, and broccoli, and orange vegetables like carrots, butternut squash, and bell peppers. Many guidelines recommend between five to seven servings of fruit and vegetables daily. A serving is the equivalent of about a half a cup of fruit or cooked vegetables, which you can have at meals or as snacks. Next up are starches and whole grains. These are an important source of long life lasting energy that can be rich in gut happy fiber. Great choices include oatmeal, rice, whole grain breads, wheat and corn tortillas, whole grain pastas, quinoa, which is technically a seed, barley, millet, teff, and on and on and on. Most dietitians say to aim for at least half of your daily grain servings to be whole grains, but the truth is there is really little benefit to highly refined grains unless you are using them right before a run for quick calories. Aim for the majority of your grains to be whole, but allow for some leeway on occasion. The third part of your plate is protein. Protein is essential for muscle maintenance and growth. The great part about plant-based proteins is that they are often lower in fat and include fiber as well, keeping you fuller longer. Examples are soy products such as tofu and tempeh, edamame, seitan, green peas, all the beans, chickpeas, and lentils. Other sources that are both protein and fat sources are anything in the nut and seed categories, such as hemp seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, walnuts, almonds, peanuts, and all forms of nut and seed butters. Vegan meat replacements are usually high in protein as well, but typically not whole foods, so enjoy those in moderation. Make the transition to plant-based simple by straight up swapping out the protein. Trade dairy milk for soy milk for similar protein profiles. Swap out the eggs for a tofu scramble. Use lentils with taco spices in Southwestern dishes, and 
and cook up a big batch of chickpea noodle soup. Now that we've covered the major portions of your plate, let's zoom in on what you need in smaller amounts. I'll begin with fat. Fat is an essential part of the human diet. It's also one that is very calorie rich per gram, nine calories versus four for protein and carbohydrate. So a little fat goes a long way. All plants contain some amount of fat and rich whole food sources include coconut, avocados, and nuts and seeds. Using a small amount of these foods more as a condiment rather than a significant portion of your plate is a great way to keep your meal balanced. Speaking of fat, omega-3 fatty acids are an important part of the diet and essential to your health. Most commonly found in fish, you can still achieve your omega-3 goals with plants. Walnuts, hemp seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, and even Brussels sprouts are good sources. If you don't eat these foods, you may want to consider a plant-based supplement. Now, when it comes to supplements, the reality is that plant-based people are likely to become deficient in a few areas, especially if you don't consume fortified foods daily. Fortified plant milks and cereals provide many of the vitamins and minerals that are harder to get even on the best diet. Calcium, vitamin D, and other nutrients like vitamins B12 and D are commonly added and they are a great way to get what you might be missing. If you don't consume many fortified foods, it's highly recommended that you at least supplement with B12. Even omnivores are at risk of being deficient in vitamin B12. B12 naturally occurs in soil and it's taken up by plants, which is then consumed by animals where it is stored in the muscles. As our soil becomes more depleted, the natural occurrence of B12 is starting to decrease so much that even meat eaters can become deficient. There are currently no government recommendations for B12 supplement dosages for vegetarians, but one study suggests that doses of up to six micrograms of vitamin B12 per day may be appropriate for plant-based diets. And finally, the last ingredient you should add to your plate is flavor. Don't make the same mistake I did at the beginning of my journey and focus entirely on nutrients. When I'm making a meal, I like to choose a flavor profile first and then build my dish around that. One day, it could be a Thai-inspired peanut sauce poured over vegetables, tofu, and rice. The next day, it could be a spicy tomato salsa topping bean and veggie burritos. Or it could be an Indian-style chickpea stew with carrots and onions over quinoa. Every day, it seems like plant-based recipes and options are more accessible. So put on a good podcast and have some fun in the kitchen. And now it's time for the Mental Strength Minute. Fortify your mind in 60 seconds or less. Today's topic is the black box method. This visualization technique is where you make negative thoughts disappear into a black box. Before you start to have negative thoughts, visualize a black box in your mind and hear the sound it makes when the lid closes. When a negative thought comes, visualize the feeling as an image in your mind. For example, if you're thinking, my legs are so heavy, imagine a heavy boulder. Now change the shape and the color of the boulder and shrink it into a tiny pebble. Next, visualize putting the tiny pebble into your black box and hear the lid shut. The pebble disappears forever. Then replace the thought with a positive one, such as an image of a feather. The reason this works is because you're turning a feeling into an object, which helps separate it so you can eliminate it. The winner of January's book contest is I.J. McFarland, who wrote, Love this podcast, five stars. I'm 58, and after 12 years of being a runner, I finally have the nerve to register for a marathon. This podcast is giving me practical advice for how to get it done, but more importantly, it's making me believe I can actually do this. So glad I found this podcast. Thank you so much for that awesome review. Your mission is to email me at claire at theplantedrunner.com with your U.S. mailing address, and I'll send you a signed copy of The Planted Runner, Running Your Best with Plant-Based Nutrition. If you'd like to win your own copy, all you have to do is leave a review on Apple Podcasts, and I will choose one random winner each month this year. If you don't want to rely on luck, you can order your copy wherever books are sold, but your reviews are still incredibly helpful. Thank you so much for listening or watching this on YouTube. Have a great run today.